Hi, this is Cindy Gardner, your online travel boss, and we are here again for another installment of a woman of color entrepreneur as she shares her personal journey in entrepreneurship. I am so glad that you guys have joined us today, and I am introducing you to Sharik Richardson, and she is the founder of Digital Innovation Media Group, and she is going to talk about her personal journey. And so before we get to Sharik, what I want to do is, again, thank you guys for being here and let you know if this information is valuable to you as we share tips and recommendations don't forget to share invite your friends and family as we continue the entire week with sharing these amazing stories hi Sharik how are you how are you I'm doing great thank you I'm so glad that you could join me today thanks for having me you are so absolutely welcome okay so let's start with how long you've been an entrepreneur I've been an entrepreneur full-time since 2015. Okay, and so what were some of the things that made you decide to jump into entrepreneurship? Sure, well, for me, it was, it's always been in my family. My grandfather was a serial entrepreneur, so it was kind of in my blood. But I did go the corporate route after college, and I loved it. However, the problem with the corporate route is, is that when I was in sales, I was so limited, and so I was kind of like confined a lot. And then when I moved from the sales environment to like Duke and the corporate more office setting, there was a politics. And even then I still felt confined, like in a box. Yep. And I was like, okay, I have to get out of here. I need to do my own thing. And I knew what I wanted to do, but I still wanted to do some more research. And so that's kind of how I met you in the coaching program. Um, and I got the right coaching and I was able to go and um, start a business and take that leap. That's great. And so a lot of, you know, a lot of the people that I work with are in the similar situation. They're either transitioning from a corporate job into entrepreneurship. And so since 2015, what were some of the things, two or three things that you struggle with when you first started your business? The first thing I struggled with was just comparing myself to other people who are doing the same thing that I was. And yep. I know it's very common because you really have to have tunnel vision when you're working or <laughs> You are doing, you know, especially something very public like social media. And it's hard because you're seeing these successes and these wins. And so I compared myself to them and then put myself down. That's right. And it actually paralyzed me. For a long time, I didn't do anything. I just froze because I just assumed there was this committee watching me saying, well, you're not that one. You're not that one. That's right. Yep. And it's all in my head. I love so, that. That's a really good one. And I think, I think a lot of people need to hear that, that this whole concept of comparing yourself to others, because they're only showing you the positive. They're only yeah. showing you the fact that they're already making a million dollars. They've made all, they have all these clients and they can, you can do it like that. And they don't, they don't show you the struggle. So I love that. The fact that that was one of the, that's absolutely something I struggled with as well. So what else? Other things I would say is perfectionism. I'm one of those people who likes everything to be perfect. And so I held on to a lot of my, my programs. I held on to a lot of uh, things that I figured, well, people already know this and yes. not just so and everything. And I would hold back. So That's I would right. say a combination of perfectionism, but also not just fully going and making, you know, making, making mistakes basically. Yes. That's I wanted a great to be one too. perfect and that I just wanted to be this flawless entrepreneur out there who doesn't make mistakes has no you know missteps but the reality is that it's going to happen so um instead of just holding back and just not putting things out there i just put out there and just say hey i'm going to learn that's right that's right Eventually, but at first it was very hard yes now do you think that it's it, it's it's sort of this concept from so for me as an african-american woman coming in coming out of a corporate environment where you know, the expectation is, is that that's how I was brought up. You need to do it. You need to do it right. You need to be polished every single time. And then translating that into my entrepreneur world, that was a difficult transition for me because I'm like, it has to be like on point, you know, eyes dotted, T's crossed. Um, and it doesn't really need to be that way. <laughs> well, that's the truth. And that's, that, that was probably what got me that way because corporate was so hard yeah. on those things. Yep. And especially like you said, being a woman of color. That's right. You have to That's do right. it twice. You have to work twice as hard as you That's know right. to be just as good. And I had that issue where I was put into a box where I was like, you know, you make one misstep 
and it's documented. That's right. It's documented and it's in your permanent right. file. <laughs> and so you go into business with that same mindset. That's probably the biggest struggle, I think, going from corporate to entrepreneurship is that you have to release and let go of that corporate mindset in a way. You still keep some things as far as professionalism and things, but other things like that, those hangups, you got to let that go. That's right. That's right. I, uh, I call it that you, you have to accept, you have to be free to be you. Um, yeah. And that transition of being you and finding who that is can be difficult initially when you're going from corporate. Now, I think millennials don't have the same issue as us people. I, I don't know what your age is, but for me, I'm 46. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think they experience that same thing. But I think for my age group, that is a big thing. And most of my uh, audience is in that same similar age group. So that perfectionism, yeah. comparison, and, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. People will accept you. Those that are attracted to you are going to accept you exactly the way you are in, in all of your flaws, which is great because I get to be just me, right? I don't have to fake and be somebody else. They will accept you. And the thing about, it, like you said, millennials don't have that hang up. They, they just go out and shoot out and do it. Yeah. <laughs> But for those of us, right, who have that experience in time, it is a challenge for us. Yes. Yep. Um, but, it's, but it's doable. Yep. And I think talking about it is, help, is helping people to come out of that, um, that, that fear, um, ultimately. That's great. Do you have anything else to share in terms of lessons learned? Other lessons learned, I would say, is having a community of people. Because one thing I've noticed when I came into this environment, coming online, Everyone who was like the guru didn't look like me. <laughs> no one did. No, and, they don't. <laughs> and so I really had to, you know, be proactive and reaching out to other women of color to just, hey, have conversations and talk about the things because there were challenges that we had that were not um, shared by our white counterparts. You know, like I, like for one, just one particular story, another entrepreneur and I would talk a lot of messenger. We would get challenged a lot on our post. Mm -hmm. People just felt like they can come in and challenge us and promote themselves on our post. And when we <laughs> flat back, they would come back, you know, like shocked, like, oh, you're being just, you're, you're being, you're threatened by me. But no, you're being disrespectful. That's right. Right. <laughs> point so, point. Yeah. And so we were kind of compared. No, it's like, hold up. Are you going through this? Or, I, oh, yeah, girl, I saw how you handled that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I would, I would highly suggest that you be proactive in finding other people who share your values and share the same mindset of you to help you and really encourage you, whether it's an accountability partner or just someone else who you see out there who's really doing it too. I think that's a really good one as well. I mean, Shrek, you've just come up with like some really good ones that a lot of people haven't been talking about, but that's part of the reason I did this summit was, you know, and it is only African-American women that I'm talking to because I do think entrepreneurs, black women need to see other black women who are going through, who have gone and come on on the other side of this journey that we're on. So I think it's very important. I'm so glad that you brought it up too. Oh, thank you. Um, so those are great. Those are three great lessons learned um, for any of you who have, um, who are, you know, you're either at the beginning stages or you're in the middle of it and you, you feel those same three things that Sharika has mentioned. I think those are great things for you guys to take into account for yourselves. Okay. So now you've been doing it since 2015 and what tips and recommendations do you have for the newbie entrepreneur who is considering jumping? The first thing I would say is your mindset. That is the number one thing that you have to check. I don't care what, I don't care how enticing it is um, for you to go out and, and put the best marketing strategy together. You are still putting a piece of yourself out there and people are going to be, you know, judgmental about it. And you have to be mentally prepared for that, for criticisms, for a lack of support by people that you thought were going to support you. All of these things you have to be ready for. And the best way to do that is to check your mindset. Now, for me, I'm a spiritual person. So prayer and meditation were the main things that I definitely relied on. And I wish I had done it more in the beginning because I ran into that mistake of not checking that first. And yeah. so I cannot emphasize that enough of have some type of system to really, really send to yourself. Um, I love that. I think that's such an important yeah. thing is to be able to realize that everyone is not there to support you. That's not their job, nor do right. you need that as reinforcement to tell you that you're doing the right thing. So 
um, keeping, I call them the ladies in your head. I call them something a little bit stronger, but keep those ladies in your head yeah. in check um, at all times and do whatever you've got to do to do that. And if meditation, prayer, whatever that may be, I, I think making sure that you pay attention to that is key. Exactly. And I think that, um, you know, as long as you have that together, you can do, you'd be so surprised of what you can do. That's right. You really will be. Yep. Okay. Do you have any other tips for us uh, newbies? Not me. Say I'm not a newbie anymore, but. <laughs> also, I mean, network, not just online, get out in your community and network. I mean, I live somewhere that's not considered a metropolis, mm -hmm. and but I've gotten so many clients just locally shaking hands, having conversations and, and just spreading the word about what you do. That's right. I, speak, I do talks on websites, web development, or conversion. So if you want to convert the website, I'll talk about that. Yep. I'll talk about social media, the things that I do, yep. because you can't assume everyone knows about it. So I say some days you have to just have a schedule where at least once or twice a week that you match your online activity with some offline connections and really get out and meet people and be selective uh, with the people that you network with. You know, don't just join any old group really really look at make sure there are people who can connect you to your ideal client and it doesn't cost a lot it's not a huge um time or money investment for that and so yeah no i'm sorry you want to say something <laughs> no the dog is barking again. i was when oh, i put okay. you on mute <laughs> Oh my God, it is like a freaking madhouse in my house today. I don't know what the heck is wrong. I dare not touch anything for fear that my computer will um, do that. Elmar, can you shut the door? Is that, okay, thank you. I Never, Shriek, I'm telling you, nobody ever knocks on my door. Nobody's ever in my house, like, during the day. And now it is a train station here. Just put it down and just stop moving. Stop moving. The dog, put it down, just put it down. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she was, I was like, don't tell me. Thank you. Just don't be telling me what to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got, I got that before the, the dog mishap. So we'll go into the next one and then I'll cut this out too. I'm telling you, it's been smooth sailing. So I don't know. And this is just testing my patience today. And you are an amazing, amazing interviewee. So thank you. All right. What else do you have for us, Shuri? Um, I also say we definitely want to make sure that you also, um, make sure you're continuing to educate yourself, That's a not good. just, you know, joining programs, which is great, but invest in reading, reading a book a, a week, a month or whatever, just make sure that you are reading and consistently feeding yourself because you never know when those skills will be called on in your business or with the client. So just consist consistently educate yourself. That's right. And if I can just say one more, one more thing, when you are planning out your, your marketing strategies and whatnot, just be consistent with it. Even if you have some days where no one responds and no one engages, just keep going. Because you'll find that once you get over that hump of everyone hates me or suck, whatever, <laughs> you keep going and then you'll see that people will begin to notice you for real. That's so right. So don't let that, that engagement or lack thereof stop you from keeping going, just go. It's an ego blow. I will definitely tell you yeah, that was a big thing too. Yeah. I'd have lives, no one would be on it. It would be zero. And then you see that sort of zero in the corner and you're just like, nobody loves me. What's wrong with me? And then you just stop. And so that is the best advice that um, you've given is just to keep going and powering through and keep consistent because um, they will start to show up. <laughs> They just want to see if you're strong enough <laughs> to make it through. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your business and what you do. And, uh, you know, like I said, most of my community, they're in a variety of different stages in their business. Let's talk about digital innovation and how you could potentially help them. So what I do for my business is more of the digital marketing that you need. And that's what we, we take that off your hands. So either if you're not quite where you want to be as far as your knowledge, or if you are already doing it and you're like, I can't do this anymore. And I need someone to either partner with me or just take me further. That's what we do. So social media management, we uh, either use your existing 
content to repurpose or we can create it for you or a combination of the two, schedule it out so you can just go about your business and not have to even worry about, am I on Facebook today? You're not dealing with that whole, oh my gosh, no one likes it, whatever. We handle that. We promote you because I know a lot of people have that fear of promoting themselves, mm -hmm. but we take it off your hands too. And that's really important. But also starting off, you know, we do a website for you. And I know that you, don't, you may not need starting out the big, robust one, but having a web presence is very, very important to your credibility and reputation. So we do that for you as well. And finally, SEO. You have a website. So the best thing about having a website is having people find it. That's right. <laughs> so we with the whole package. You know, we drive the, the traffic to the site and we also create the site so that you have a full digital marketing uh, program working on your behalf so you can focus on your business. That's awesome. And that's exactly what each of us business owners need to make sure of is I always tell, cause you know, 99% of the people that I work with don't actually have a physical location. They are online presence. And I tell people that, you know, if you had a physical building, you would never not put signage on it. You would, you would, you would announce yourself. You would let people know that you exist and having a digital footprint is so important as a business owner, even if you do have a physical location. So that's great. All of Shriek's information is available inside of this post. So all you have to do is click on it. So if someone wants to reach out to you, kind of how, what's your process and how do we um, get in contact with you? So I'm on social media. You can find me on Instagram at digital marketing works. Uh, my website is digital innovation, M as in Mary, G as in go.com. Uh, LinkedIn, I'm Shriek L. Richardson, MBA. And uh, of course, my Facebook business page is named after my business, Digital perfect. Innovation Media Group. So I'm, I'm everywhere. <laughs> That's perfect. And all of those links are above. I always never know if they're above or below, mm -hmm. but they're all there in the post and you just uh, click on that. Shrik, it has been great talking to you today. Oh, um, you. And I so appreciate you taking the time to be um, and talk to our community today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So we'll talk soon.